Capistrano puzzled me when I first started using it. I knew how to take a basic deployment recipe and fill in the blanks with my settings, but I had no idea how to make anything original with it, or what was really going on underneath when I ran a deployment. Well, if you're running into the same issue, then this is the episode for you. Things didn't really start clicking until I understood what Capistrano is all about, and that is tasks. And that's not really apparent when you look at the average deployment recipe. Let's start off with something very simple. I'll just create a new Rails application here, call it store. And then inside the gem file for this application, I'm going to uncomment the Capistrano gem so we can use it. And then I'll run the bundle command to install that gem. And then I'll run the capify command to generate the files to set up Capistrano. So this generated a file under the config directory called deploy.rb. This is where you can customize how the deployment works with Capistrano. And it has some initial settings here with some comments, but I'm just going to clear this all out at first, and let's start with something simpler. So forget about all of that customization for a minute, and let's focus on tasks. To make tasks in Capistrano is very similar to Rake, where you just type task and give it a name, then pass in a block, and then just put some Ruby code in here. Uh, let's just say, hello uh, world. And then to run that task, just call cap, and then the name of the task, and it will execute that Ruby code. Now you might need to prefix that command with bundle exec, depending on how your shell environment is set up. Now tasks are often chained together. To demonstrate this, I'll make another task called goodbye. And if we want to execute the goodbye task after the hello task, we could just call it like a method directly in the hello task. And then if we run cap hello again, you can see that it executes both the hello task and then the goodbye task. Another way to do this same thing is through callbacks. So instead of calling goodbye directly here, we can make a callback by calling after and then saying after the hello task, call the goodbye task. And running cap hello again does the same thing basically. Now tasks can also have settings. To make a setting in Capistrano, you just call set and then pass in a name, let's call it recipient, and then a value. And then you can access that just directly inside of any task by just calling it as a method. So you can say recipient, and that will be the value that's passed in in the setting. So running cap hello again, then we get hello Ruby. Now another way you can access a setting is using this method called fetch and then just pass in the name. The advantage of this approach is that you can pass in a default value as a second argument. So let's say world is the default value. So that means, let's say our recipient isn't set here. And now when I run the hello task again, it prints out hello world the first time and then on the goodbye task it fails because there's no recipient uh, setting. So far, I've just been executing code on my local machine, but Capistrano is designed to run commands remotely. To do this, you'll need to specify a server. So I can say server, and then pass in the address to the server. And I also need to specify what role the server should play. I'll explain roles a little later, but for now I'll set this to web. And I also need to set which user the should be logged in on the server. So I'm going to set this to the deployer user. Now we can run a command on that server by going to a task and calling run, and then passing in a command. So let's say echo the content of hello world into a file uh, called hello in the deployer's home directory. Now I've already set up the server with a deployer user. Watch episode 335 for more information on setting up a VPS. But now when I run that cap hello command again, it's going to SSH into that server and execute that echo command as a deployer user there. Now let's see if that worked by uh, SSHing into that server and then checking the contents of that uh, hello file. And there it is. Now what if I need to run a command as the root user? For example, let's say I want to copy this file into the root path of the server. I need special permission in order to do this. Well, to run a command through a sudo in Capistrano, you can prefix it with a call to sudo like this, and then I will have special permission. Now there is a little gotcha here, and that is if you want the password input to work properly, you might need to enable this option called default run options PTY and set that to true. So this way, if it requests the password on the server, it will pass it to your shell. Let's try this out, running the hello task again. And this time it's going to run that command on the server, and it may end up asking you for the password too here. But let's see if that worked by running that SSH command again by accessing that hello root file, and it says hello world, it worked. Now Capistrano is also designed to work with multiple servers. So if we specified multiple servers here, and when we call run here, this is going to run this command on each one of those servers. 
but generally, if you have multiple servers, they may need to take on different behavior, so you'll need to run different commands for each one. Well, this is where roles come in. For example, let's say this hello task just had to deal with the database, so we only want to run this for servers which deal with the database. So we could specify a roles option on this task and just say database here, and let's try running this with only one web server specified. So when I run cap hello again, and now I get this message saying, hello is only run for servers matching the database role, but no servers were found. So it didn't end up executing this command on any servers. So we would need to add the uh, database role to the server for it to execute that command there. Now there are three different roles that Capistrano uses. There's web, app, and database. So web is either an Nginx or Apache server, app is actually where your Rails application is hosted, and maybe either Postgres or MySQL database. But you're not limited to just these three roles. Uh, you might have a, a queuing server or a caching server and so on, whatever your deployment setup requires. Now one thing important about the database role is that you should pass this option called primary and set it to true. And what this means is that it's the primary database, so this is the one that it's going to run migrations on. So if you have a master and slave setup, this is how that works. Now there is another way to define the server roles. Instead of using the server method, we could use a role method like this, where we pass the name of the role and then the server and list out each one individually. I prefer the server method just because it's more concise if you don't have a lot of servers, but you can choose the approach that you prefer. Now that we know these basic concepts of Capistrano, we can get a better idea of what's going on when we actually deploy with it. To show this, I'm going to actually browse the source code on this GitHub project. So under the lib directory under Capistrano, we can check out the recipes directory, and there's a file in here called deploy.rb, which contains all the deployment related recipes. So these are the tasks that are provided by Capistrano out of the box. If we scroll down here, we can see where the tasks are actually defined. Everything's under this deploy namespace, and you can see there's a default task here, and this is what gets run when you call cap deploy. So this just triggers two other tasks. It's really simple. It triggers update and restart. So let's see where those tasks are defined. Oh, here's the update task. Uh, this starts a new transaction, which I didn't talk about transactions, but it's just a way to roll back changes if a uh, task fails. And this triggers two other tasks, update code and create symlink. So it's pretty simple. It's just basically a chain of tasks which do various things. Uh, that create symlink task is defined here. And this basically just runs this command on the remote server to uh, remove the current path if it exists and re-symlink it based off the latest release path. So it's easy to see here exactly what is happening when you run cap deploy. And you may be wondering where some of these values come from, such as current path here. Well, these are all defined at the top. We're just basically calling set through several of these values. And uh, don't be alarmed by the cset call. If you look up here, you can see that's just defined. And it's basically just calling set if it doesn't exist already. So it's just a way to set a default value for all these various things. And you can see current path is defined here. A block is just a way to dynamically uh, set the value and it's just joining it based off of the deploy to path and the current directory. So really nothing too magical going on here when you run a deploy. Now let's go back to the deploy recipe I showed you at the beginning of this episode. Primarily what we're doing here is just setting various values that are used by Capistrano's internal deploy tasks. And also another thing I'm doing here is calling after to make an after a uh, callback to run the deploy cleanup task after we deploy. And this is a task that Capistrano provides as well. And then I'm also defining a couple tasks here, one to restart the server. So I'm overriding the restart task with this call here and another to do some extra sim linking after the finalize update task is called by Capistrano. So now with a better understanding of Capistrano's internal behavior, we can add and override more tasks to really configure and customize it to work the way we need to in our deployment scenario. Now for more information on Capistrano, check out the GitHub Wiki. There's some really great documentation here, especially in the reference section where it documents all the various methods and variables that you can use. And to see the various tasks available, you can run cap-t and it'll list them all out here for you. And you can also run cap-e and then supply the name of a task and that will give you the full documentation for that given task. It's really nice. Well, that's it for this episode on Capistrano Tasks. Thanks for watching.